Hi guys, it is April from Getting Hooker With It. Today we're chatting about the 10 lowest rated books on Goodreads that I have read. I'm going to discuss what I think of them. So let's get into it. Before we begin, please hit the like button if you do enjoy this video. It really helps my my channel and also subscribe if you haven't already. Today is a very snowy day outside. We are right in the middle of a major snowstorm. They're talking like 40 centimeters. Whew. So what better time to film, I feel like. So we're going from like the highest amount of votes, which is very low, to the very lowest. Let's just dive right in. The first book I need to chat with you about is Black Mad Wheel by Josh Mallerman. This was his second novel, I believe. This was given an average rating of about 3.29 on Goodreads. And I have to say, I feel like, um, it's fair-ish. I feel like if this is a between a three star or four star, this follows, it's another horror book by Josh Mallerman that follows um, a group of army people going into the desert and they've brought along with them this band and they're there to study this very strange sound that they've discovered there and it, the sound kind of makes you go insane. And I thought it was really interesting um, the storyline was interesting. I do feel a little bit weird that Josh Mellerman was playing with the sense of sight in Bird Box and now he's playing with the sense of um, hearing in this one and it feels like okay what are we are we gonna like move on to smell what are we doing here but it did give me the creeps. It was eerie and uncomfortable so I don't know why it got such really low ratings because this means that like some people just gave it one star. But that said, uh, I am much more upset by the next one on the list. It's The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. Um, the average rating for this one is also 3.29 stars. And this book was fantastic. I gave it five stars. Um, this is about a family that rent a cabin, or they own it, it's not ever very clear. It's the summer, um, there's a little girl named Wen playing outside with, I think, crickets or grasshoppers, and then this man walks up the lane and he says, what's about to happen isn't your fault, and he starts walking towards the house where her two dads are in the house. She runs in, and then a bunch of people start walking down the lane. They're all holding these strange weapons that they created themselves. And they're saying, you know, we aren't gonna hurt you. We just need your help to save the world. It's very violent, very bloody, very good. How in the world did this get such low ratings? Like it makes me mad. I loved it that much. I so highly recommend this. I don't know what's wrong with people. I guess everyone likes their own thing, but I do have to say, um, Paul Tremblay is not afraid of doing open-ended endings. <laughs> and um, I think that can annoy a lot of people. And I think that annoys Josh Mellerman fans as well. So there is that. I really love those endings. But if you need your endings like uh, wrapped up with like a neat bow, maybe those two authors just aren't for you. Okay, next on the list is Security. And this was given 3.27 um, for an average rating on Goodreads. This one I didn't end up liking. I think I ended up giving it two stars. Um, it's about um, someone who is like murdering people off in this hotel. And I barely remember it now. It was quite a while ago, but I remember distinctly finding it not nearly scary enough. And the ending was quite far-fetched to me. It did not work for me. I think I think the way that it's told is interesting. I think it's kind of told from the perspective of 
security cameras and you're following the characters along through security cameras. So that's neat and I like that but the actual story itself didn't really work for me. So I think that's an accurate, I, I like that Goodreads gave it that, that star rating. Next is The Grip of It. Um, this was given 3.26 stars on, as an average on Goodreads. And this is a horror story. It's like a literary horror story about a couple that move to this house and it's haunted and the house itself is slowly but surely like decaying like you see stains on the wall and that they didn't see when they moved in that kind of thing now what I really liked about this book I think I ended up giving it four stars what I really really loved about this book was I felt like it was a metaphor for their marriage crumbling that all of the stains on the walls and all of these the, the house falling apart around them was very much more of a a symbol basically of their marriage just falling apart at the same time so I felt like they were being really haunted by their marriage and it wasn't really a haunting story so I could see why some people would go into this being like oh a ghost story how perfect and then be like oh it's not what I had imagined it to be and and sometimes it's a marketing thing as well. Um, I had heard from the get-go that it was literary horror, and I think that's really important for people. If it ever says literary in front of horror, you're not gonna get like straight up terrified most of the time. <laughs> okay, next up is Her Fearful Symmetry. This was given 3.24 stars on Goodreads on average, and I read this a long time ago, like over 10 years ago. Um, this is another ghost story um, story where we follow these siblings. I think they're twins. They are twins. And they receive a letter in the mail that says that their aunt, who also was a twin to their mother, I think, um, their aunt has recently died. They didn't know their aunt. She has decided to give them her apartment or home. And in exchange, they have to A, live there for a certain period of time and B, their parents can never go into it. And then the home is haunted. Now it's very strange, again, literary horror. And I, I feel like that keeps coming up over and over again where people just, just doesn't work for them. I can't remember even what star rating I gave this, but I remember liking it. Um, it might have been a three star from me as well. And maybe it's because I picked it up going, oh, I love a ghost story. And then I was like, what's this? This is more about family relationships than anything else. So coming in at number five, The Dinner. This um, was given 3.22 stars on Goodreads and I ended up really liking this book. This follows two couples, the brothers or the two men I should say in these couples are brothers who hate each other. Now they've all come together to sit down and talk about what their children have done and it's over the course of this dinner that you discover what the children did and what they're willing to do about it and what they need to do. And you know, the main character is such a, one of the most loathsome characters I've ever read. I really hated him a lot. He's very pompous and arrogant and despises his brother so much. And I just really, really despised him. And, uh, it, but it, it's this slow burn mystery and you slowly uncover what these kids done have done and the kids are also quite loathsome when you learn what they have done. And um, I really liked it. I thought it was really good writing and interesting. Um, so I think I ended up giving this four stars if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so next up coming in at number four was a book that I despised and I wish this was on the bottom of this list and came in dead last because I hated it so much. It's The Spider and the Fly, A Reporter, A Serial Killer, and The Meaning of Murder. This was given 3.21 stars on Goodreads. This is a nonfiction book by a reporter um, about her relationship with this murderer. This murderer had killed off all sorts of prostitutes and he'd stuffed them into the attic. He lived with his parents and his parents had no idea 
that all of these women were in the attic dead and until it's revealed that he's a serial killer and it's about her relationship with him what I hated about this book and I thought it was so honestly quite despicable in my opinion was her constant need to compare her life to this murderer's life and the the people in his his life um comparing you know her crumbling relationship with and her not being able to see that her relationship is about to fall apart um romantic relationship she'd compared that to um this serial killer's mother not recognizing that there are bodies in the attic and you just can't compare these things i don't know what she was thinking i just thought it was completely inappropriate and truly disrespectful to everyone in this situation to be talking about your stupid life in comparison to all sorts of families who lost their lives these victims lost their lives and it would just it just sat so so poorly with me so that on I gave that one star if I could give it zero stars I would probably my host my most hated book um coming in at number three I, it's this one that makes me mad Tangerine got 3.21 stars on Goodreads this is a beautiful book. Now, again, I think marketing has a big role to play, I'd say, in the reason that this got such low ratings on Goodreads. It was marketed as a thriller, and it should have been marketed as a gothic mystery. This follows um, a woman named Alice, I think. Yeah, and she's moved to Tangier with her husband. I think this is the 1950s. And she moves there with him. You can feel the heat in this so atmospheric. And she gets there and suddenly her old um, housemate, um, college housemate named Lucy shows up and she's like, what are you doing here? They didn't end on good terms. They did not part on good terms whatsoever. Suddenly Lucy's here. Lucy's going to stay with them too. She's just bombarded right in. She just barged in and here I am to stay. Um, suddenly Alice's husband goes missing. And it's this slow burn mystery. If you like Daphne du Maurier, I think that you would love this book. I adore this book. It's one of my favorite mysteries for sure of all time. How in the world did this get such low ratings? I really think it's the marketing's fault because it was pitched as a thriller and it's not a thriller. It just isn't. It's got some thriller aspects to it but it's so much better than a thriller. Like, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, that one really broke my heart. When I went to this list and I saw that, I was so angry. <laughs> okay, uh, coming in at number two is The Lifeboat. Um, this was given 3.20 stars on um, Goodreads, on, on average on Goodreads. This is a historical fiction book about um, the sinking of a boat. Um, it takes place in 1914 and an ocean liner goes down and it really is um, looking at class. All of a sudden there are people on, in first class, second class, third class, you've got all of these people of all different walks of life in a time where class really mattered. <clears throat> the ship has gone down people are on a lifeboat, uh, what happens? What happens to those dynamics? Does class matter when, you know, survival is at stake? It's very interesting. And it also follows a bit of a mystery because we meet our main character um, when I think she's up for, like she's in court because she's accused of having like wrongfully killed someone in the scenario so you know the stakes are very very high I thought this book was fantastic and I think I gave it four stars really liked it I think that was a book recommended to me by Harriet Rosie um so thanks Harriet so and then the last book on this list is The Boy at the Keyhole now this was given 3.13 stars on Goodreads and I have to say I kind of agree with it. It wasn't bad. Like I would never give this one star. I think I ended up giving it three stars. This is about 
a boy who lives in this big, huge home. It's very gothic. Big home. Um, his mother suddenly leaves. She suddenly disappears. And I don't know if she's left a note behind or what, but it's very sudden and he starts to feel uncomfortable. And he actually starts to think that the housekeeper, his nanny, actually killed his mother or made her disappear in some way, shape or form. So you follow this little boy absolutely terrified of her and like really um, questioning everything. And it kind of uh, builds to a, a, a crescendo, a big, a big peak and, um, and quickly ends. Now I will say I loved the ending. I thought it was really great, but it was almost too little too late because it was so slow for me. It didn't really work for me. Does that deserve the lowest rated book that I read? Um, no. Oh my goodness. The spider and the fly absolutely deserves that. How any of these books landed at the bottom. I mean, come on, come on. Ah, uh, I think marketing might have been the reason that it landed at the bottom. I don't know why anyone wouldn't like this. And then I think for this one, I think a lot of people don't like open endings. That's my theory. I'm sticking to it. Let me know in the comments below. Have you ever like play around with Goodreads like this and and dived in. I'd love to know what some of your lowest rated books that you've read from like the average from Goodreads are for you and like if there's any shockers there for you. I'd love to know. Um, I also wanted to mention that I am getting much better. Um, down in the description box you can find my Amazon wish list. Um, I recently got a book from a subscriber, which was shocking and so wonderful. I'm gonna talk about that probably in another video. Um, so my Amazon wish list is down there, and then I also have my um, Instagram page and also my Goodreads. Since we're chatting Goodreads, it's there. Go and follow me or become a friend on Goodreads. I hope you guys are doing well. I will talk with you soon. Bye.